the data management problem. Um, what's the data management problem? So generally, the data management world um, in technology terms is an ancient world. Um, it's been around for like four decades. So 1970s, uh, basically when the terminology of data warehousing was uh, for, first come up and the um, processes around it started working. And then generally the processes around getting data ready for analytics have not really changed since then. They're basically, we basically consist of three main processes. First one being data ingestion, integration of multiple data sources uh, to one relational stack um, or data lake, basically into one source where the relationship between those multiple data sources are kind of mapped out inside. The second, uh, the second, uh, the second uh, part, the second stage of technologies and processes is basically the data management and handling. This is basically where the warehousing is. Um, all the, the DBA world, the challenges you have with storage and all the processes around it. So this is where you select your nodes and make sure your architecture scales and so on. Where inside the stack do you put your data? Questions like that. And the third process is the process of data extraction. Basically, basically optimization of schema and optimization of queries uh, inside, inside the architecture for performance. Now, in, in these four decades, there have been major technology breakthroughs. We've had amazing companies like uh, lately Amazon, Google, but also Oracle and SAP and companies like that. Basically focusing, IBM of course, basically focusing on two main axes. One, the axis of storage, and the other, two, the axis of performance. So today, as compared to 1970s, we're able to store uh, data at a much cheaper rate. And we're able to analyze data, um, much, much bigger sets of data, uh, at a match with, uh, uh, with much faster results. Uh, what this has basically caused is for companies like ours, I imagine every person here is uh, a part of uh, a data-oriented organization, companies like ours to hoard more data and analyze data, uh, and analyze much, much bigger sets of data in order to, get the, to extract their value uh, for, the, for, uh, for their organizations. Um, now, these processes, these processes uh, have been developing while the underlying process of data, of, of data management has not really changed. So on the axis of efficiency, there are arguably uh, many, uh, many, um, many types of little optimizations you could, you can, uh, you can, you can, you can, you can do, and many optimizations that have been done in the past 40 years. But arguably, and this is what I claim, is that in the past four decades, decades the main, um, the main focus has been around optimization of storage technologies, optimizations of performance, um, and this is still the, it's, this is still the main focus today. While the um, axis of efficiency, in terms of the underlying process, has not really, has not really been uh, an area of, fo of focus, maybe marginally. Now, so, we so basically we have companies hoarding more data. We have um, technologies being analyzing much larger data sets. We have a, a growing, growingly fragmented uh, area, while the underlying process is the exact same as it was in the 1970s. So basically what this causes is a data management problem. The core reason for the data management problem is um, an underlying truth that inside the critical path of getting data ready for analytics, there are two main stakeholders. Two main stakeholders with different uh, objectives and different goals. Um, that are in charge of one critical path. Now, every time something, something changes inside this critical path, so every time data needs to get segmented or a new data set comes in or the business logic of the organization changes, there is a manual process, a manual discussion that goes on between these two uh, stakeholders, the extractors of the value and the developers of the, of the architecture, that is the inherent cause of the inefficiency in this process. And the longer, uh, the larger the data sets become, the more fragmented uh, they become, um, the um, longer the time uh, from data to value becomes. Now, um, how big is this problem? Uh, so in recent, in recent, recent polls, or just in the past year, uh, data scientists from various organizations have claimed that 50 to 80% of their time is spent um, around inefficient, inefficient tasks. 
Um, there was a uh, report by Gartner in March 2017 talking about CDOs and CIOs, um, stating that their number one uh, focus area for 2017 is operational efficiency. Now, the reason being that they are now realizing that for every dollar they, sp they spend on data scientists, they're actually getting two months worth, two month worth of value for a, year's, uh, for a year's salary. So this may seem like a problem or a challenge for large organizations, um, and it is, but it's also a big problem for smaller organizations. And the reason is, it's be is because of the, um, the evolutionary scale of the way we all build our architecture. So we start off with something pretty simple. We connect some, so some data sources with a very simple ETL process, ELT process, whatever. We copy them into some sort of database, and then analyze them, whether with a BI tool or whether with a um, direct uh, SQL. And then um, analysts begin analyzing the data, and we begin to realize that maybe we should tranche the data, the logic inside the, inside the, uh, the, the database in order to um, get better performance. And then the company grows, and each department gets their own mark. And then the data scientists come in, and they, have, they need some sort of, uh, some sort of uh, sandbox environment to crunch the raw data. And add to this a growing number of multiple data sources. Add to this a growing number of multiple, um, um, multiple stakeholders inside the organization. Add to this multiple uh, data visualization solutions and needs. And you just basically get a huge mess. So, so what do we do? What's Panoply's approach? And um, after realizing this, uh, this core inefficiency, um, how, do we, um, how do we try to, uh, to attack it? So in the past couple of years, um, we've done some research and we've developed some um, machine learning algorithms. Um, and this evolution in the field of machine learning algorithms, uh, basically around data management, data management uh, the data management world has basically enabled us uh, to attack uh, the third, the third uh, axis, the axis of uh, efficiency around the uh, underlying process. So Panoply, Panoply basically automates and optimizes the, uh, the data management problem. We do this with a set of machine learning algorithms that reside above the storage technologies. Uh, these machine learning algorithms um, basically uh, automate the stack. They mimic the work of the DBA and streamline the process to the actual extractor of the value and as much as possible take the engineer out of the loop. So uh, kind of uh, in a nutshell, how do we do this, the practicality of this on the ETL side, um, we, uh, we have a select and connect a set of data sources and we'll talk about this in just a sec. Basically, it's an ETL as platform, so there are no ETL processes you ever have to maintain. Um, the uh, platform itself uh, decides where, where inside, the, inside the warehouse to organize the data based on usage, whether it's cold storage in the warehouse itself, in a relational database, or in a caching layer. Um, and three, as the platform under, understands and realizes the business logic while the analyst analyzes, um, it, in an agile continuous manner, it optimizes and um, it, uh, it, uh, it uh, optimizes um, the uh, schema and uh, the schema and uh, end query. Um, so, just to wrap up, a small business case that uh, that we've done um, in the last couple of months. Kimberly Clark is an organization. I don't know if all of you, but some of you know. Um, Huge organization in terms of fragmentation, right? They're um, they're uh, selling in more than 80 countries to approximately 1.3 billion customers a year. They have dozens of brands over multiple platforms, any social platform you might you can think of. They have a huge data science team, and when they came to us, they were already using some sort of underlying BI platform. They were using Palantir. So the question was, what is the value? that a platform like Panoply can give an organization like that that has all the power um, and all the resources to solve those inefficiencies in-house. So 
An organization like Kimberly Clark has a huge data science team, but that data science team is under the constraints of all the other uh, parts of the organization. They had a couple of data sources. These are just some of them, which they knew their data was there. Their data was there for a very, very long time, but they did not have access to it. Now, the reason they did not have access to it, not because nobody knew the data, the, the data that was there, just because of prioritization. In order for them to get that data inside their IT and start analyzing all the data, they need to go through IT. IT had other priorities in order for them to start connecting those data sources. And specifically, those data sources were very complex. But even if we talked about um, easier data sources, it's a process of maybe it will come this year. And they needed that, they needed that, uh, they needed th that data. They needed uh, some way to... Um, some way to, uh, to extract that value. So even in large organizations today, uh, organizations that have uh, all the resources uh, to address those, uh, those co the constraints that uh, small organizations have, the 80% inefficiency, 50% inefficiency, whatever, the process is still highly inefficient. Um, and efficiency is not just around size, it's also around fragmentation. This is something that uh, all of us feel. So luckily, uh, they came to us and in Panoply, we basically have three choices in terms of, of, uh, in terms of uh, 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 connecting multiple collecting data sources that did not exist yet. Uh, they could either build them, build them by themselves on our uh, framework, or we could build them for them. This is something that we do uh, for uh, select customers. Um, or they could use a third-party ETL tool, uh, which we partner with a couple. In their specific case, we built the uh, data connectors for them, so that now those data connectors are actually available to every other uh, retailer um, that might uh, that might use them. Um, and, and basically, now those data sources, each one of those data sources, doesn't matter the uh, how difficult it is or how easy it is. The minute they're built, um, they're a select and connect data source uh, with no ETL process that they need to manage. And those, uh, I don't know if any of you here are from retail, but um, those data sources are extremely, extremely difficult. And to save a process of ETLing the data that comes from them into a warehouse is something that saves, for data scientists, is a lifetime. It's, it's specifically in the 80%. Now, not only that, but after the data was connected and the analysts started analyzing the data, over a two-week period, two-day, seven-day, 12-day after the baseline, over a two-week period, the platform itself, with no IT work, was, was able to lower dashboard runtime by 80%. And this is all done through uh, analysis, basically the analysts building their dashboards, uh, the platform understanding and realizing uh, the business logic, and doing all the semi-optimizations uh, in a um, progressional way inside the architecture to give that performance. Uh, now, if their business logic changes, which it does, um, what would happen is that the run times would probably go back to uh, probably a long time. The platform would reassess by its own, understand that the business logic has changed, and again, through a, a certain period of time, basically two weeks, would reassess and re-optimize the data again to lower the run times by 80%. This is with absolutely no IT work. So this is what we talk about when we talk about st streamlining the process to uh, the um, actual stakeholder that is the extractor of the value inside the organization. Um, so I think that basically that's it. Yeah. All right. And yeah. Oh no, I'm five minutes late. All right, that's fine. Um, I talk faster when I talk to myself. Um, so that's it. Um, thank you so much. <laughs>